Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School down in Elgin County today, uh, joined by Drew Thompson from Pride Seeds. Hey, Drew, how's it going? Very well, very well. The sun is shining and we're getting closer to harvest. We're going to get there, we're going to get there. Hey, I want to talk to you about uh, something you've seen this year. You know, you walk a lot of fields, see a lot of things throughout the year. This year, you saw some boron deficiency. Tell me about it. Yeah, so boron is something that, to be honest, really wasn't on my radar prior to this year. Uh, what happened was there was a grower that uh, called up his, his dealer and, and said, hey, something funny is going on you want to come down and take a look the dealer took a look he called me up and said you got to get down here Drew and, and so down we went and and this is kind of what we ran into so we had a whole bunch the majority of the field had some nice cobs looking really good but there was a bunch that looked like this and and so this is obviously not what you want to yeah. see normally I would see something like that and I would just say ah you know you probably uh, an insect bit it it was it was, yeah. it was planted too shallow it emerged late but then when you start walking through the field, you realize there was there was more of this in there than, than you'd like to see. There was a little bit of a pattern to it where it was showing up worse. And and so, yeah, we, we, we basically figured we better take a little bit deeper dive. Yeah. Now, any, I was going to say, what, what are some of the characteristics of those plants? I mean, from a tasseling perspective, so, that, that give it away. So, so absolutely. So the first thing we notice is, is this poor pollination. Yeah. And so yes, we had some hot and dry weather, but obviously we had some great pollination. Yeah. Bit of tip back, but nothing unusual. Um, but the big thing that really jumped out to me was when we start looking at, at the tassels. And so here we are with our, with our good plant. We've got a nice, normal, healthy looking tassel. And here's our poor plant. And we've got a very small, spindly, almost non-existent tassel. Uh, when I read through the literature, what would cause a, a, a small tassel to form. And basically the research suggested boron. On. Yep. Boron is very important in, in the Mary stem, so where, where the uh, the plant is, is growing. And so you've got a Mary stem at the cob, you've got a Mary stem at the tassel, and that's where the boron needs to go. If there's no boron, you don't get that cell division, you end up with a smaller cob, you end up with a smaller tassel. Right. So with that in mind, we sort of said, hey, we better get out there and, and, and actually confirm this. And, and so we pulled some tissue samples. We, we took what we thought were the good looking plants, we pulled some tissue off of that, we grabbed what we thought were the poor looking plants, we grabbed some off, submitted it to the lab, the results came back, we basically analyzed for everything that the lab could do, and the vast majority of nutrients were, were no difference between the good plant and the poor plant, but what really jumped out was the boron. Yeah. The boron level was, was less than 10% in the poor plant to what it was in the good plant, yeah. so very low. So boron is a micronutrient that not a lot of growers pay attention to. How, do, how does it get, how do you get it on your radar screen? Well, and, and, and that's just it, you know, so those that are growing alfalfa, they're thinking about it all the time. It's very important and, and used quite widely in alfalfa. Those that are dealing with uh, some of the higher value horticultural crops, they know the importance of it as well. But really boron is one of those nutrients that, that, that moves within the soil. It's an anion, it's basically released from the minerals of the soil and that's where we get most of it. And most of the time we, we've got enough of it. But when you start getting into dry weather and so dry weather means that it's not releasing from the soil and it's also not in the soil solution to get into the plant and and so we are really scratching our head at the moment saying how do we recommend it but you know if we talk about corn you know 10 15 years ago we shot for 200 bushel and and you know with better management of our NP and K our macronutrients you know we, we, we got up to that 200 bushel but now that we're going for the bigger numbers and shooting for 250 and we've got this beautiful corn crop behind us that hopefully is going to hit that 250 number we're starting to realize we really need to start focusing more on our, on our micronutrients and, and boron is one of them. Right, so take a real good look at that soil test, take a real good look at your fertility plant. Absolutely, and, and, and so that's your, your, always your base, but the problem with something like a boron is because it's so mobile in, in the soil, you really don't have much likelihood of getting a good understanding of what's in your soil based on, on a, a soil test. It'll basically tell you what's there that given day. Yeah. A big rain could come, a bunch more could leach out and, and whatnot. So what I think when we start getting into these micronutrients is we really need to start doing more with that tissue sample. Yeah. The tissue sample says what's in the plant. The labs do a great job of basically saying, all right, here's the level you have, here's where you need to be. They'll make some recommendations to help you out. Because boron, very, very difficult to, to identify early in the season. Right. There's really no characteristic, um, you know, plant, what, what this one looked like versus that one. This field in question, it looked awesome prior, and then we get into the tasseling time and, and, and early development of the cob, and that's when we sort of see it. So I think that tissue sample is really going to do it. So yes, we want our soil test, but I think we really need to start thinking about complementing that with, with our uh, the tissue analysis and, and using that to complete the program, especially when we're shooting for those top end yields. Final question, when should growers be sort of looking for boron deficiency? When should they be taking that 
tissue test? Absolutely. So that's a great question. I'm still learning that. I think what we need to be doing is getting out into our fields right now. If we're going out there and we're seeing some of those small cobs, we're seeing some of that, that small tassel, which really seems to have linked to, to at least what I've seen this year, is maybe we'll put that into the back of our mind and say, okay, that field maybe has an issue. Um, I think what we need to be doing though is because the boron is so crucial when that cob's developing, it needs to be quite early. So I would think maybe we should be pulling some tissue samples, probably when the plant's in that V6 to V8 stage, send it away, figure out does it need something. If it does need something, there's still lots of time to fix it. The other thing though is, is maybe we need to think about it as, as, as a component of our fertility program. You know, add in half a pound a pound and, and just see if we can boost that yield. Because again, I think we've done a great job with the macros. We now need to fix the micros to keep that yield going higher. Awesome. Hey Drew, great stuff. Always great to have you on the Corn School. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you.